So in the past few weeks, I've published a few videos with electric mountain bikes. At the same time, there's been a bunch of developments in like the global electric mountain bike world with new motors that have come out, more powerful than the previous, electric mountain bike races, and whole new electric mountain bike models that are whole state-of-the-art advancements better than the prior. Amongst all that new stuff in the mountain bike media, the comments are hilarious. The amount of paranoia about electric mountain bikes is next level. I thought it'd be fun to find out where this paranoia is coming from and if it's valid. So first up, one spot where the differences between an electric bike and a pedal bike should be very apparent as a technical climb challenge. Let's see how terrible the e-bike is. This is a regular pedal bike. In this video, we're gonna go back and forth and try a bunch of different sections of trail on both the pedal bike oh. and then on the electric bike. To make this a little bit more okay. interesting, we've strapped my phone to the side of the bike that has an active display of how fast I'm currently going. This right here is currently the most powerful class one electric mountain bike on the market that I'm aware of. This is a 108 Newton meter powered, 750 watt or one horsepower electric motor. Let's see the difference between this guy and the regular acoustic bike on a technical climb. On the pedal bike, we saw a speed of about five miles per hour. On the e-bike, we saw a speed of about eight miles per hour. Yes, that's very strikingly different when you're off the bike, but the actual speed is not really that much more. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison to see if that three mile an hour increase in max speed is something we should be desperately afraid of. What do you think? We're gonna leave this thing at exactly 50% power, and we're gonna see what it looks like going at a very honest full tilt boogie clip climbing up this fire road right behind me. Won't be a video without a wheelie. <laughs> at 50% assist mode, we see a top speed on this fire road of approximately 11 miles per hour. To show the max extreme of this example, we bumped the Rocky Mountain up to 100% power to get that full 108 Newton meters of torque. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna be too easy in the current gearing, and I'm gonna need to shift up a couple of gears in order to have the right kind of cadence. So it's gonna be quite a bit faster than what the 50% level was. Yep, that is pretty quick. So let's zoom in and slow down and see how fast that is. There we go, 15 at the very end, 16 miles per hour. So let's compare the speeds of the electric bike to a regular pedal bike. I did grab the heaviest pedal bike in my entire fleet for this test, so this is not gonna be a super fast pedal bike comparison. That said, I think it's gonna be great to see the differences between the fastest e-bike, the slowest pedal bike. From filming this video, I learned that the biggest actual difference in max speed between the e-bike and the pedal bike is right here on a very intermediate grade where it's neither too steep nor too technical. On the pedal bike, we're seeing seven miles an hour. On the e-bike, we're seeing about 15 miles an hour. So yes, it's double the speed, but it's still only 15 miles an hour. One spot where lots of people told me e-bikes had a massive advantage was super technical climb challenges. I've only made it up this section of trail right here really once before, and that was on a super lightweight cross country bike like two years and 10 pounds ago. Well, today I tried this on the full-sized e-bike and I didn't actually think I could get it at first. Took a whole bunch of practice runs up top and finally did get through it, but it wasn't easy. And then just to make sure everything was fair, I hopped on my super heavy free ride bike and lo and behold, two or three tries and all of a sudden made it to the top. I had thought the bigger e-bikes were disadvantaged for this stuff because when you're really standing up and mashing, putting down power or the hops, they are either so heavy or they're limited in their output that they actually worked against you. Recently, the more powerful e-bikes have actually kind of fixed that. So you can make some of this techie stuff on a big e-bike. That's a whole other discussion because there's a lot of design caveats bike engineers aren't thinking about for really technical climbs and big full-size e-bikes. As we get wrapped up in the comment section about why we're so afraid of e-bikes, it's easy to forget the whole reason many of us ride mountain bikes is for going downhill. If this is all true that e-bikes are massively fast motorcycle machines, shouldn't they then go faster downhill? Let's find out. The first run filming through there, top speed, 20.2 miles an hour on the e-bike in the ludicrous max boost setting. It's getting warm. I need to make some element in a few minutes here. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we've been really lucky to enjoy an extra late summer, but it also means trails. While they're super dusty, it's still running pretty hot out, so I'm finding myself sweating a ton on every mountain bike ride. I want to give a big thanks to the guys over at Element, L-M-N-T, who make a really good electrolyte supplement. 
This stuff's really simple. It's just potassium, magnesium, and sodium, the three most critical electrolytes you need as you're sweating during strenuous activities like sending it on your mountain bike. Uh, this stuff has a tiny bit of stevia extract for flavoring, so it's totally paleo friendly. I start to notice that I'm getting dehydrated when I get a little bit more fatigued than normal or my mental clarity goes down and I start making poor decisions on the trail. To avoid that, I put a little element in my water bottle, do one of these in a small bottle, and I've found that helps stretch one water bottle for a couple of hours. It makes it far more effective than if it were just plain water. Today we're drinking the orange salt flavor, and uh, I really like this stuff. For a limited time, Element has been kind enough to offer viewers of my channel a special deal where if you use the link in the description below, drinkelement.com slash Jeff, you can get a free sample pack with any order. That link is D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Jeff, J-E-F-F. -E I've been using this stuff for a while, I've been enjoying it, and I think you guys might like it too. Thanks to all of you, and also thanks to Element. Let's get back to the video. All right, first run down this trail. Top speed, 20.2 miles per hour. Second trip down this trail, nine minutes later. Top speed, drum roll, 19.4 miles per hour. So this bike was a half mile an hour slower through this section, even though Logan said it looked faster. Interesting, I don't know where the actual fastest speed was. I think it was before we got to the part that we were focusing on at the big camera, but the two bikes felt similar. The bigger one, the e-bike, actually felt more dangerous because it's harder to change direction and control it. Now, watching the two examples side by side, yep, there's a half mile an hour difference, and nope, I can't really tell a difference. In the name of science, let's try this test again on a slightly steeper downhill section of Technical Trail. Max speed for that section of trail, 17 and a half miles per hour. Let's see how the old pedal bike compares. On the pedal bike, top speed is actually 19.2, which was two miles an hour faster than top speed on the e-bike. And there we go, something the haters said was never possible. The pedal bike was actually faster than the e-bike. Let's do this again real quick on a little bit more rolling section of terrain and pull that steep aspect out of it. First up, the pedal bike. It's approximately 18.3 miles an hour for the acoustic bike on this section of flattish rolling-ish terrain. Let's try the e-bike, maybe it'll be faster. I didn't have much of a plan there. I saw the end of my days and all these rocks right here, so I'm glad that wasn't worse. I'm gonna try that again. Top speed for that section of trail on the e-bike, 18.1 miles an hour. It's basically a wash. The pedal bike was actually a smidge faster close enough that essentially the top speed on actual mountain bike trails is literally the same as these. Sections of trail like this right here are exactly why so many of us ride mountain bikes. The whole idea of storing that kinetic energy into a full-on adrenal experience, plus just interpreting the forest with the energy you want, that's such a core reason why we ride mountain bikes. Now, going down this stuff on the actual acoustic pedal bike, in my opinion, is more fun. With 15-ish pounds less weight, you can jump the bike more easily, it's easier to change direction. It's just a more pure experience. It's less diluted with the extra clunk and weight. Now, that's not to say there's nothing wrong with an e-mountain bike, but the actual fun downhill part of the ride, I think it actually suffers a little bit. So on this steep, rooty, kind of treacherous little drop-in, we had a top speed on the e-bike of 13.3 miles per hour. Not exactly rip roaring fast, even though I don't think I could have gone any quicker and it was kind of scary. All right, let's see our max speed on the pedal bike for that section of trail. Oh, it went a little bit quicker, 14.4 miles per hour. Not enough faster to say it's that much different, but it's interesting to see that in our early sections of trail like this, there's really not a difference between the pedal bike and the e-bike. This is a little more fun, but that's the only real difference. We've tried the EMTB and the regular pedal bike on really steep sections of downhill and on flatter, more rolling sections of trail. On an actual single track trail, when it's a technical environment, getting around 20 miles an hour is pretty hard to do, regardless if it's a pedal bike or an e-mountain bike. This paranoia we have that e-mountain bikes are gonna be going way faster down the trails, it's simply not true. When it comes to going up the trails, yes, clearly they're gonna go a little bit faster, but it's not nearly a whole different world like many folks might think it's going to be. So why are we so afraid of electric mountain bikes here in the United States? Well, the answer is threefold. First up, 
we're really afraid of losing trail access. Here in the United States, we have one main advocacy group for all of us mountain bikers, and we have tons of small local advocacy groups, but regardless, we as mountain bikers are not very good at supporting our local advocates. As a result, we don't have a very strong voice when it comes to gaining more trail access. So we're afraid that if land managers hear that we're riding motorized bicycles, that the land managers will then assume this means we're riding motorcycles, and that means we are absolute heathens fully destroying the trails. So this first reason we're afraid of e-bikes is we're afraid of losing access to trails because they could be perceived as something they're not to the layman. So that feeds right into point number two. And that's the fact that the United States has this deep Puritan background. According to a paper published by the University of Delaware, many Americans have adopted the Puritan ethics of honesty, responsibility, hard work, and self-control. As such, adding a motor to the noblest invention of mankind is therefore not respecting either the bicycle or the trails we're riding on. And if we don't have the self-control enough to just pedal ourselves, we might as well be motorized heathens. If we're in fact using a motor, then we're no longer being responsible for our own getting up the hill. That right there, I think, is a big part of why we're so afraid of electric bikes. Finally, the third reason we're terrified of these electric bikes is that because of reasons one and two, we've never actually tried one ourselves. As you've seen here, the addition of one max horsepower, nominally one third horsepower, it doesn't really do a whole lot to change our actual speed on the trail. But still, there's that thought that all of a sudden a motor is therefore 50 horsepower and we are on motorcycles. That thought alone keeps us from even trying, let alone educating ourselves about what an electric bike is and isn't. Now finally, where does this all take us? Well, if we do end up wanting to do throttle assisted mountain biking, we'd probably wanna run about 3000 watts. And if we were to put four times the voltage through this motor to bump it up to 3000 watts, that's about four horsepower, I think this motor would fry pretty quickly. Furthermore, the tiny batteries we're using on these e-bikes, they would be depleted so quickly. The actual bicycle chassis is not capable of carrying enough electricity to power a motor that much bigger. I basically have exactly that at home as a pit bike. It's 3000 watts, weighs about 90 pounds, and it's the very bare bones beginnings of what's fun with the throttle on two wheels. There we go. I hope this video has helped everyone understand a little bit. We don't need to be so terrified about e-bikes themselves ruining the entire sport of mountain biking. No, 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 no. Instead, what we need to do is perhaps consider embracing e-bikes and using this as a way to get more numbers to our advocacy groups because the actual trail usage isn't all that different. And if we can have a louder voice when we go to talk about getting more trails open for bikes, we would be a lot better in the big picture. So. That's my opinion. I'm pretty happy that I have a ton of pedal bikes. I don't actually own my own e-mountain bike. I have more fun riding regular pedal bikes, but I still enjoy riding e-mountain bikes. It's a whole different experience. And because it's so different, that's a big part of why I find it to be fun. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'm sure you're already frothing to leave some comments down below. Please do let me know your thoughts about why you think everyone's so afraid of e-mountain bikes here in the United States of America. And if you are in fact not here in the States, how was the situation with e-bikes in your own country? I bet it's a lot mellower than it is over here. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.